Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video with the uh, with the little uh, Peugeot Django. Now, what we're gonna be doing in this video is uh, carrying out a replacement of the carburetor. So the, the bike itself has been running pretty poorly, starting poorly, uh, and when you do get it going, um, you know, it'll, it'll, I can get it idling with a little bit of uh, a little bit of throttle, but as soon as you open the throttle and the, the carb switches to the main jet, it, it just bogs and dies. Um, the carburetor is probably absolutely stinking inside, uh, so what my plan was to do was get a rebuild kit, clean the jets, etc, etc, put the carb back together, uh, run it through the uh, ultrasonic cleaner, put it back on the bike, and that would probably solve it because nine times out of ten, that's... Um, what's going to fix the issue. However, what I uh, actually ended up having to do was buy an entire carburetor. So here is a carb for this bike. Right here, brand new, as you can see. Um, and the reason for that is because there is no rebuild kit available. For those of you that have seen the uh, video where I did the fork seals on this bike, I explained then that the, the, the aftermarket parts, not aftermarket should I say, sorry, the dealer uh, level parts and the support for this bike is next to non-existent. Um, and consequently, they don't make a rebuild kit for the carburetor. They expect you to literally buy a new one. Um, looking at the Peugeot uh, website, uh, the parts website, the from memory, it was somewhere in a region of around 245 pounds for a carburetor. And who's going to spend £245 on a carburetor when you could just get a kit for £30 and, and rebuild it? It's absolutely ludicrous and I'm very, very disappointed with Peugeot's aftercare, if I'm being br brutally honest. Anyway, that said, this carburetor did not cost £245, it cost £45. Um, now, it's very, very hard to find uh, carburetors for the Django. Um, the Django itself is based upon the Chinese SIM bike, uh, SYM, I think I'm pronouncing it correctly, um, and it's basically just got Peugeot bodywork on. Um, the carb itself is fairly um, unique to this bike because although it looks identical to the one on the SIM, the, the Django does have an electronic choke, but it also has a um, heater element for, for the carb, so it's basically like a carb heater uh, for when you're trying to start in winter um, to prevent carb icing. Um, so that's worth bearing in mind. What I'll do, I'll leave a link to this carburetor in the description below so you can go and check it out. Anyway, so yeah, as I said, 45 quid for this. Um, and again, it was really, really hard to find a Django one. So I had to go searching around um, and I compared some part numbers. Now this came from a speed fight Four, I think it was. I, th I think it was a Speed Fight Four, um, one two five, and the part numbers were identical. Again, what I'll do, I'll leave the links in the description, um, so you can go and uh, have a look. Anyway, I think I've waffled on enough. What we need to do is obviously we need to get to the carburetor, which is uh, mounted on top of the engine. To get to that, we need to go in through here. Now um, you can just uh, remove this inspection panel. Um, and that would probably give you enough room. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the entire storage box um, so that uh, I've got plenty of room to work and I'm not going to you know, restrict myself at all. So to get that off, what I also need to do is take the rear seat off because the, uh, the cable for the trickle charger goes through this grommet onto the battery, which is under the rear seat. To get the box out, once I've done that, it's two 10mm bolts at the back and then two t um, T20 Torx at the front. Uh, and it's all off. So what I'll do, I'll get the rear seat off, get the box off, and then, uh, yeah, I'll bring it back and we can get stuck in. Right then, as you can see, with all of this off, you can see how much access we've got. Uh, you know, we, we, we've got plenty of room to work here. And here is the carburetor that we're going to uh, obviously remove. 
Um, now, with the new one, we've got quite a lot of pipe work um, with it, um, right up to this union here. Um, but what we'll do is, as we remove things, fit the new car up, we'll, we'll see what we need to retain um, on the bike and what we're getting that's new with the new carburetor. So the electronic choke, um, the connector for that is just here. And we'll be able to disconnect that quite easily. We've got fuel lines, we've got a few electrical connections. Um, obviously we've got the clamps for the inlet and then the uh, inlet track that goes into the cylinder, uh, the cylinder head. Um, so yeah, we've, uh, we've got plenty to be getting on with. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll start by disconnecting things such as the throttle um, and, uh, and, yeah, and the electrical connections. And then we should be able to pull the car out quite easily. Right, first place I'm going to start is with the uh, with the throttle cable. So to remove it, all we need to do is rotate the throttle linkage, pull the cable off, and it'll just pop out like so. And then we can let the car, let the um, let the throttle reset itself on its spring. And there we are. That's it disconnected there. What we need to do now, though, is just undo the locking nuts and then we should be able to wind this nut out all the way just like so and there we are that is the throttle cable removed from the carburetor we can take it out of the way just like so okay so now what we've got here is a load of electrical connections. Now these should have been um, tucked away. Like there's a little clamp here look, which isn't really holding anything. They should have all been tucked out of the way. There's another one just here, another little clamp, which isn't really doing anything either. They should have all been underneath that. So this one here comes down to the, uh, to the carb heater. And it's literally just one bullet connector, one spade connector. We'll move that over there out of the way. Now the uh, electronic choke, simply push down, pull it apart and there we go. Really really simple stuff so far. So this is obviously going to come out with the carb. So next I'm not 100% sure what pipe work we, we've, uh, we've got so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep some of it connected but this will pull off there we go, just like that. That's just a vacuum line, that one. Um, and I think that's it for that. Next, we've got a fuel line. Now, the fuel line is this one just here. So what I need to do is I'm probably going to dri uh, dribble a bit of fuel when I disconnect it. There is a little spring clamp on it, which is just here. My fingers are on it right now. Um, just here. Once I just pull it, if I pull that back, you can see I can slide it up the pipe just like so um, and yeah when I pull that off I'm probably going to drop a bit of fuel so what I need to do is go get some uh, workshop tissue so I can mop up any spillage. Right with my tissue I'm just going to stuff it down there to catch any spillages and then I should just be able to pull the, pull the pipe off quite easily. And to be fair, there's absolutely no fuel coming out of it. The bike hasn't been running over a while anyway, so um, yeah, it's probably all uh, drained back to the tank. The uh, the vacuum, um, the the fuel pump on this is vacuum operated anyway, so it only operates when the engine's um, running, uh, physically running. It's not just um, it's not an electronic pump um, that comes on when the ignition's turned on. Um, I believe the EFI models will be completely different, um, but obviously we're working with a carburetor model because that's the uh, that's the aim of this uh, the aim of this video right okay so that's all the external connections uh, removed now what we can do is we can get on with actually removing the two clamps that hold the carburetor on okay i'm going to start at the rear and all i need to do is when we fillip screwdriver is just undo it Open it up as wide as I can. And there we go, you see it's all moving, it's all good. Same at the front. Oh, 
open it up nice and wide. And then what I should be able to do is actually remove this screw entirely and I might be able to open the clamp right up. There we go. And this one will open like so. And there we are, there's, there's the front clamp. So now we should be able to wiggle the carburetor out of place. There's the back removed, and there's the front removed. Okay, there we are. So that is the carb completely off the bike. Um, and as you can see, it's a bit dirty. It doesn't look terrible. Um, looks, looks, look, looks reasonably clean inside. Um, but obviously, <laughs> this wood, it's, uh, it's going to be inside here. That's uh, going to be the, uh, the problem. Uh, where the jets are. Um, the dive fan feels good. Mm. Um, so yeah, so this is um, this is a carburetor made by Denny, D-E-N-I, and this is a DPD 24J. So I was hunting around for absolutely ages trying to find the, uh, the correct carburetor for this and I couldn't find the DPD 24J. There was loads of other variations of it, um, but it was it's finding one with the uh, with the card the carb heater circuit um that was the uh, that was the main challenge i could find plenty of carburetors that would um you know that would have fitted and it probably worked but um it would you know it wouldn't have been the correct the correct item for this bike so anyway we can uh, we can now look at getting the brand new one fitted in its place okay on the uh, carburetor that i removed um, one thing I didn't disconnect, and the reason why I didn't is because it wasn't actually connected, was this little hose here, and it just basically slots onto there, and all that is is a uh, drain hose. If you, want, uh, if you want to drain the float bowl, um, which you should do um, if you're putting the bike into storage over winter or whatever, uh, don't let um, stale fuel just sit in your float bowl because it'll just gum up everything, which is probably what's happened to this. Um, yeah, if you undo this screw, what will happen is it'll allow what's in the float bowl to drain up through this little nozzle here down the pipe and then that pipe goes down under the bike um, where it'll just drain onto the floor or, or onto into a tub or whatever it is you, you've uh, drained it into. Um, the brand new carburetor however comes with a new hose so this one is no longer required so it does go down the side of the engine there is a little there is a little clamp um, that holds it in position just to keep it out of the way I'm not sure if you can see that just there with a little screw on it I'm pointing my finger at it right now. I'm not sure if it's showing up or not. I don't have a torch to hand to be able to show you. But what I'll do, I'll um, remove this pipe out of the clamp. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we'll um, obviously no longer require this one. So um, I can, uh, you, yeah, uh, basically throw this one in the bin because the, uh, the new carb came with one. So anyway, uh, without further ado, let's get the new carburetor installed. Okay then, on the new carb, let's look at what we have. So if we undo all of this hose and see what we've got here. Okay, so we need to take the little twister off. Okay, here's the hose I was talking about, here's the new drain. Um, honestly, I'll go down to the bottom of the bike um, for for draining the uh, the float bowl. Now this um, this carburetor, as I pointed out before, um, doesn't um, on the old carb doesn't have any of the numbers or uh, serial numbers, etc. This is a uh, aftermarket carburetor, um, but uh, it's probably made in in China or somewhere like that. But when you consider that the one that we've taken off was also made in China, because this is actually a Chinese engined bike. Um, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not expecting it to uh, cause any real issues, um, that's for sure. So, yeah, um, what we need to do, take off all the blanks, such as that, the fuel inlet, pop them into the box. Um, and, yeah, now we can uh, look to install it onto the bike. So if I get the, the back in first... 
we are. And then the front pops in like so, and you can see there's little slots in the inlets, both at the front and the rear, there's little slots, and what they do is they'll engage with the castings on the carburetor. And here we are. So now, now that that's in place, we can get the clamps back on. Again, there's a little slot there which goes onto this little protrusion on the side. And in the position. Pop the screw back in that one. And tighten it up. and tight Again, nice and tight. Okay, so that is the carburetor installed onto the inlet pipe work. What we need to do now is obviously make all the um, electrical connections and vacuum connections, along with the uh, obviously the fuel hose. Right, what I've done here on this vacuum line is I've made some slight adjustments to it and I've turned it around because it was coming uh, the other way around. I'll turn it around this way, probably because, like as I said before, this is from a speed fight. This car was made to go on a speed fight, and the uh, the routing of the vacuum lines is probably different on that bike. Um, anyway, what I've done is I've uh, turned it round so that it matches up with this little T piece, and then we can put the little clip over the top. If it'll fit. There we go. Right. So that's that done. What we do need to do is bring the throttle linkage down like so. And knock it up to touch. And then I'll tighten that lock nut very shortly and then the throttle cable wrap it around make sure that it is engaged a bit awkward but we'll get there it's not quite engaged correctly there there we go and that's that sorted now there is a little bit of play in that, so we do need to adjust it. Take some of that out. There, there will be a specification in the book for throttle free pre-play. I'll have to I'll have to check that later, but I'm not too concerned about it now. It'll be fine to get it running. And if we throw the throttle on the handlebar, there we go. We can see. She's working fine. Right, next we'll do the um, we'll do the carb heater and the fuel line. Okay, the fuel line on the carburetor is on this side of the bike, which you can see on the old carburetor just there. So that's where this hose needs to go to. So I'm gonna plug it in. As I said, it is vacuum operated when the uh, when the bike cranks. Now, obviously this, this carburetor is gonna be absolutely bone dry. 
um, and as a consequence of that, it uh, it may take a little while for fuel to come out. So um, yeah, it'll uh, it'll crank for a while before we actually get it to fire up. Um, but uh, yeah, it'll go. It will go eventually, especially with some nice fresh fuel. Carb heater connector there. Just like that. And then what I'm going to do, unlike the way it was before, is I'm going to stick it underneath this little cable clamp, just like so. And there we go. Right then, next, what we need to do is the carb heating uh, cable, which is just here. Can't get it wrong because you've got one spade connector. one bullet connector. Spades on. And the bullet's on. And there we go. Right. What I'll do with this is tuck it neatly underneath that cable clamp. And that is the carburetor installed. Now what we need to do is obviously we need to get it running. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna make sure that there's a nice fresh fuel in the tank. And then, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's gonna take a little while to crank it. So I'm not gonna sit here forever cranking, but um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll we'll get it fired up. And then uh, hopefully it'll rev nicely uh, when, we, uh, when we twist the throttle um, and uh, everything works as it should. So yeah, let's give it a bash. Right. Okay, so uh, what I've done, I've spent the last hour off camera um, sorting, the, sorting the fuel system out. What I've done is I've drained all the old fuel out. It took a little while to get it all out, um, but that's all uh, been removed from the tank and I've put um, a couple of litres of fresh fuel in there, probably two, maybe three litres um, of fresh fuel in the tank now. So the fuel that's in there is, is you know, bought within the last couple of days. Um, so we, we know that um, fuel isn't going to be an issue. What I've then done is um, I've uh, put the battery back in and I have, because um, well, the battery was on charge, I, I wanted the battery to be fully charged uh, because I wasn't sure how long we were going to have to crank the bike for um, to, get it to, to get it fired up. Um, but what I did was I cranked it a few times um, just to make sure that the uh, fresh fuel went through the uh, fuel pump and up to the, uh, up to the pipe going into the carburetor. Um, I got fuel out at this point, so uh, I know that we've got fuel up to the carburetor now. So now, uh, what we need to do is obviously we need to get that fuel into the float bowl, and then once it's in the float bowl, it'll then go up the jets, and hopefully the bike should fire. So what we need to do is turn on the ignition. Now on this bike, you have you do have to um, hold the brake in in order to fire it uh, fire it up. So we Using any throttle, just going to crank it a few times like that, and basically what I'm going to do, probably no more than 20 seconds each go, because I don't want to, I don't want to damage the starter motor. So I'm just going to keep cranking and cranking and cranking until such time as it fires. Um, I'm not going to, uh, what I'll do, I'll edit the video so that um, it shortens him hat time, so I'm not going to sit here forever with you watching me just cranking the bike. Um, but obviously we'll, uh, we'll, we'll um, be together at the point when it does fire up. So yeah, here it goes. Okay, there we are, um, got there eventually. It took a little while to uh, crank, obviously we had to get fuel from the fuel pump up to the carburetor 
the the float bowl then had to fill with fuel so it took a little while um but uh, yeah and you know it started and it's running nicely so if we try again Absolutely spot on. Um, I may need to adjust the idle ever so slightly, but I can do that. Uh, I can do that later. Um, what I need to do now is obviously take it out for a test drive, make sure it uh, make sure it doesn't bog down and it's running fine. Um, I'm, I'm I'm not anticipating any issues because um, it's pretty much just a straight one for one swap with the car. Anyway, guys, hopefully you uh, found this video interesting, informative, useful, uh, or just enjoyed watching it. Um, hopefully. Um, thank you very much for stopping by and I will see you all again for the very next video. You guys take care. Bye bye now.